I'm working on a video that I'm having uh, difficulty making because there's a lot of German that I need to translate. Apparently some uh, politician in Germany won an election and Merkel doesn't like democracy because I believe he was sponsored by the AFD or something. So I, I'm just like at the surface level of trying to understand what's going on. I, I haven't really dug deep into it. Uh, but while I was doing this, I, I noticed this article and this really upset me. It upset me because if you guys remember a couple of months ago, uh, Jordan Peterson started crying during an interview. And while I understand other people who don't like him to mock and ridicule him, I don't understand when feminists do it and when people from the left do it. Because their whole ideology is that, well, feminism is for men as well. Because you see, feminism is about breaking the gender stereotype and wants to allow men to express their feelings, to express their emotions and to cry in public. And it seems that the only reason they want to do this is to take advantage of that weakness and push on and, and humiliate and mock them and ridicule them. And I have made another video where I went through the Twitter and I show people with many followers who claim themselves to be leftists doing this, mocking Jordan Peterson. Um, and it's, it's really disgusting, you know, like if you're a part of an ideology which claims that you're okay with men showing emotions and then the moment a man shows you emotion, you're attacking him for it. Well, congratulations. Now you find out why the patriarchy is important, why it's important for men not to cry, because you're not going to find understanding hugs and cuddles if you're a public person and you cry on the internet. What you're going to find is people turning on you and using that information which what upsets you and what hurts you and tries to dial it up to 11. So yes, if you're a public person, never cry on the internet. Just tell your friends your problems, you know, tell your uh, close ones, but do not wash your laundry in public. Now, it seems that the reason Jordan Peterson cried is because he does have uh, quite uh, a difficulty in his life. Um, he seems to be in Russia right now, uh, trying to fix an issue that he has with uh, addiction. So I do appreciate when people have a problem and they seek help. You know, I'm, I'm never going to mock someone for trying to fix something that they consider to be wrong with their life. You know, it's like making fun of a obese person that's at the gym. Is that, well, they, they notice that they have a problem, so they're trying to fix it. Why, why would you mock that person? Same thing with a person that suffers from addiction and they go uh, in order to seek help. I, I would not mock such a person. Now, uh, in the case of Peterson, uh, regardless if you like him or not, I do appreciate that he exists because he does push back against the uh, authoritarian uh, left that happens to be in universities, especially in Canada. And there aren't many people like him. It's not like I can be picky and uh, say, well, I didn't like this and that of what he said, and therefore, like, <clears throat> I'm not going to purity spire. If there is a person that calls out things that are happening in academia and they're accurate, and he says accurate things back at the people that are trying to deconstruct him. What can I say? You know, that interview that he had on national television with the lobsters, perfect example on why he is good at doing what he is doing. He manages to navigate the political correct labyrinth so that they don't have a single thing against him. Like he knows how to, to, to speak for hours on end without falling into a political correctness trap. Because that's it. Like that's how the game is played. The political correct labyrinth is made so that it's very difficult to express certain opinions that you have and the moment you express them the wrong way you're done like you're done your career is over you're done uh, peterson managed to maintain his navigation skills at peak efficiency but unfortunately he seems to be recovering from a severe addiction to benzo benzodiazepine tranquilizers so i guess uh, more commonly known as sleeping pills uh, and he was recently in a near-death induced coma, uh, and this uh, is something that his daughter is saying. He's being treated in a clinic in Russia after being repeatedly misdiagnosed at several hospitals in North America. Now, I, I really hope that these misdiagnoses are misdiagnoses because of medical errors and not because people hate them. Like, I, I don't know how you can misdiagnose something that is a pill intoxication when you have family members that say, yeah, these are the pills the person took and you can run blood tests. So well, hopefully there's more to the story that I'm unaware. Because it seems weird that you can't get help from a hospital in North America and you have to go all the way to Russia in order to get proper treatment. To me, this 
raises a couple of red flags. Okay? I'm, not, I'm not saying one way or another, I'm just saying that as a medical practitioner, it seems bizarre. So the University of Toronto physiologist, <clears throat> who became an intellectual hero to a global audience by aligning self-help theory with anti-progressive politics, was first prescribed the medication a few years ago to treat anxiety after um, Mikhaila described as an autoimmune reaction to food. His physical dependence on it became apparent to his family last April when his wife, Tammy, was diagnosed with cancer. So yeah, I can see why a real life problem can add up to, you know, all of the online things that he is experiencing, which got him to cry at an interview. Now, uh, it's also important to say a lot of people uh, find his work disparaging because it's like, well, what does he do? He tells people to clean their room. You know, why, why is that such a big thing to tell a person and the reason is that some people actually need to hear that especially if you're thinking about some uh university student that's being brainwashed into that his role is to save the world and he needs to start the revolution and all that and it's like well fucking can't clean your room you can't clean your room you can't wash your penis and you want to go out and start the revolution what are you mad you know try improving your life try actually becoming a productive member of society first and maybe then you can start the revolution. But first, like, just, just try to, to reach a point where you have a family, where you can support your family, where you can become independent. And I still don't get it. Like, why, why so many people criticize him for this advice, like cleaning your room? Some people are desperately needing of that particular advice because their room is dirty. Um, <clears throat> so he went to a rehabilitation center in New York. And he was diagnosed with uh, depression. And his condition worsened throughout the winter, his daughter said. Man, is this his daughter? This is the first time I see her. It's very difficult to focus on the article. Just saying. You know, I said there's not going to be comedy, but come on. You can't show me these pictures and expect me to... Okay, fine. Uh, he was driven to thoughts of suicide by a, mo a movement disorder called... Uh, a movement disorder called uh, akathisia, a well-known side effect of various drugs for mental illness. It is a sense of restlessness and an inability to sit still. This is why it's good not to take uh, pills. All right, especially mental pills, unless absolutely necessary, unless you really can't handle uh, going without them, you should postpone them as much as possible. I, I took depression pills at a point, and what happens is that the more you take them, the more, and I'm leaving the side effects aside, but, but hear me out, if you happen to go to, to have a depression, all right, if you happen to have the downies, to have the gloomies, and you go to a psychiatrist, if you tell him what the psychiatrist needs to hear, you're going to get pills. It's, it's really easy to get depression pills, uh, surprisingly. And uh, once you take them, you eventually your body gets used to them. So you either need to up the dosage or you should stop taking them. And the moment you stop taking them, it makes you feel really bad. So you, you kind of became uh, dependent on them and at one point they actually stop working. So, so the best thing against depression is uh, to, to talk to people, to, to just have like normal sessions with a psychiatrist. Just, just try to avoid uh, taking pills. Unless you're having such a clinical depression, you know, you're constantly having thoughts of suicide or whatnot, like in the case of Pearson, then uh, there is not a lot of wiggle room around the pills. You have to take them. So she said the family sought alternative treatment in Russia because they found North American hospitals misdiagnose him and were prescribing more medication to cover the response he was experiencing from the benzodiazepines. And apparently he nearly died seven several times. Jesus. Uh, she and her husband took him to Moscow last month where he was diagnosed with pneumonia and put into an induced coma for eight days. She said his withdrawal was horrific, worse than anything she had ever heard about. She said the Russian doctors are not influenced by pharmaceutical companies to treat the side effects of one drug with more drugs and that they have the guts to mentally detox someone from benzodiazepines. Yeah, it's, it's in Eastern Europe as well. Like we don't give drugs in this situation. You, it, It's a treatment that a lot of people from the press don't like. You basically tie the patient to the bed in some cases. It's, it's not orthodox. You know, it's, it's not in front of the cameras. Most doctors don't admit they do it. There was even a scandal in the press about it, but what they do is they do tie the patient to the bed. Um, and once the patient recovers, he, I, I've not heard any patient complaining about it. You know, like they're actually happy that they went through the withdrawal so they can go home and um, be, be healthy. But yeah, so the, it's the same for certain pills, it's the same for certain drugs, they do tie it to the bed. And I, I'm pretty sure they do that in Russia as well. 
Uh, another way, like the, the more humane way, I guess, is to sedate them. But every time you sedate someone, it does damage to the kidney, it does damage to the liver, and more importantly, it costs the hospital money. So welcome to Eastern Europe. Uh, Jordan Peterson has only just come out of an interview, uh, one of an intensive care unit, and uh, she, he has neurological damage and a long way to go for full recovery. He is taking anti-seizure medication and cannot type or walk unaided, but he is on the mend and his sense of humor has returned. He's smiling again in the first time in months, she said. So just wanted you guys to know what, what is happening. It's uh, <clears throat> very difficult for him, I guess, when uh, his family probably is all he's got, because I understand all of his colleagues uh, separated themselves from him. Um, there are other university professors that will flunk students that are quoting him. Uh, there was this really nice YouTuber lady, I forgot her name, but uh, she was fired from her university because she taught students uh, a different view on things by playing a Jordan Peterson thing. So yeah, I mean, I, I do think he's very important uh, for the culture war. Even if you don't agree with him, it's, it's still a person that's fighting against the far left effectively. He's fighting against authoritarianism and he is fighting against the hive mind mentality. It's like you just get your life straight first, you know, get married, have kids, get a job, provide for your family, be a productive member of society, and then think about starting a revolution or whatever nonsense you have. And the thing is, like, once people get that, they get into that, they even forget about starting a revolution because they're, they're more focused in raising their kids. Uh, but yeah, so that's that's what I wanted to say. Um, let me know what you think, and I'll see you guys in the comment section.